Hi you all, welcome to your English class once again. In this video, we are going to continue with your chapter of course book that is 14-2. So let's start with this. This is a play we are reading. The first part of this play we have already read. It's written by Alice Iria Gustenberg. In our previous chapter, we have read that Jessica, she also dropped out and after hearing this, Mrs. Pringle, she was very glad because she has regained the list of 14 guests once again. Otherwise, she was in hurry to make arrangements for the uh, new guests that were arriving as the number has increased to 16. Now, only 6 uh, guests from the original list are coming and rest 8 people are the new ones. So they have to rearrange the seating diagrams and also remake the place cards. So let's read in this part what happens next. The conversation. Mrs. Pringle. I spent hours over the diagram. So much depends upon having guests seated harmoniously. There's the front door bell, Dunham. I told Annie to answer it, but peek into the drawing room and tell me who it is. The telephone rings again. Mrs. Pringle eyes it suspiciously. You murderous instrument. Now, what have you to say? Hello, Oliver Francois, secretary. He's had to leave for Boston at once on very important business. She hangs up the receiver without completing the conversation and hits the telephone in a temper. Then paces back and forth in rage. How dare he? At the last moment like this? No regard for the efforts the hostess makes to provide an evening's enjoyment. And such a good dinner I planned and he promised he would come. I don't believe he had a business. He just didn't want to exert himself and was afraid of freezing in the blizzard. As if he didn't have half a dozen limousines to carry him to the door. It's downright rude and worth millions. Just a match for you. Elaine, she tears up his card and now I don't know when I can give you a chance like that again. I'm perfectly furious. I'll never speak to him. Elaine, perhaps he really did have business and was called away. Mrs. Springle, going on. And I, one of the most important hostess in the city, the people clamoring to receive my invitations. He was my most important guest. Every other man considers it an honor to meet him. And now, not coming, it's all the damnable blizzard. Alan, now I will have to stay away from the table. He's not coming, makes us 13 again. Mrs. Pringle, in temper, go to bed then. I'll send you milk and crackers. Elaine, but mother, it's not my fault that he had business out of town. Mrs. Pringle, yes it is. If you would perk up a bit and not to be so timid and make something of yourself, he would hear about you from other men and be curious to meet you himself. Oh, what a family I have, no one to help me and my ambitions. Dunham enters from the left. Dunham, it was Mr. Morgan, ma'am. He couldn't have received the second message for I heard him explaining to Mr. Pringle how happy he was to receive your telephonic invitation. Mrs. Pringle, we are back to 14 then, Dunham. Dunham, yes, ma'am. Annie told me there were several motors making their way through the snow. It's late now and cooks swearing about the dinner getting too dry. The telephone rings. Elaine jumps. Elaine, I won't answer it, Mrs. Pringle. I should say not. Hello, Shapley. Yes, Mrs. Tropper. But now you must come. You are prepared for you. We are prepared for you. Yes, for eight of you. Your daughter told my daughter about your house guests and we are delighted to have them. Every plate is set. Your daughter was quite right. It wasn't an imposition at all. Of course, my daughter had authority to invite the guest. Eight isn't at all a big number? Oh, but how foolish of you to take that stand. Why, dear, she hangs up the receiver. Now Mrs. Tupper is furious at Ella for telling you about the house guest, that nothing would make her bring eight when we invited six. So she is leaving for Ella and Henry at home. Remove two plates, Dunham. We are twelve after all. So what happens? Oliver, he refuses to come because he has to go for a business meeting away from the town. 
and mrs springle she is very angry because of this and she is speaking even very rudely about oliver and she is even talking very badly to her daughter because she is in very angry mood and mr morgan he is also coming so they are again left with 14 guests and she is also having some conversation with mrs tupper as there was conversation between the daughters so their guests are also coming elaine but if you have leave it 12 father can't sit at the end mrs springle i shall go mad people ought to know whether they are coming or not but the accept and regret and regret and accept a half a dozen crowd hurry together when i had planned everything so beautifully now how shall i seat them if i put mr tupper here then mrs tupper has to sit next to her husband and if i want mr morgan there oh it's impossible i might as well put their names in a hat and draw them out of out at random i'm through through with the men like oliver fransworth i don't care how important they are they are nothing without courtesy and consideration business of on trains nonsense didn't want to come and meet a sweet pretty girl well he's not good enough for you don't you dare marry him alain so she is in very angry mood and she is just in uh, speaking uh, endlessly about mr oliver and all the guests because sometimes they are are uh, talking on the phone phone that they will come to attend the dinner sometimes they are refusing so everything is going like that their seating arrangements are changing again and again so they are in very uh confusion and they are in very confused mood and in very confused state that what they should do and what they should be left with do you have a note from mr fanwith ma'am there are two strange gentlemen in the lower hall they presented this letter he said he was the secretary all other guests are upstairs in the drawing room but the two gentlemen downstairs are waiting for your answer one gentleman's face looked very familiar ma'am but i just can't place him although i'm sure i have seen his face somewhere mrs springle she has been reading the note and is overcome with surprise and joy my goodness it's the prince of wales dunham the secretary said you cut off the telephone or central disconnected you he was about to tell you that mr fransworth knew the blizzard he had prevented his highness from taking up an invitation way up town mrs springle the prince of wales is in lower hall waiting for me to ask him to dinner elaine then we will be 13 again dunham there's this great tree miss his his bodyguard mrs springle rising to the occasion certainly the secretary we shall be 14 at dinner serve the drinks to him the guests may sit anywhere they choose i shall bring the prince of wales with me elaine mother wasn't it nice of oliver fransworth to send a prince in his place mrs springle didn't i always say that oliver fransworth was the most considerate of men elaine i think i shall like mr fransworth mrs springle silly child it's too late to like mr fransworth it's time now to like the prince i always manage somehow to be the most successful hostess thanks god for the blizzard so in the end of this play mrs springle her mind gets converted because she has changed the option for her daughter instead of mr fransworth now she is being inspired by or she is being attracted towards the prince of wales so she is um, suggesting her daughter that she should not marry mr fransworth instead prince of wales is somebody better than him so this is all about the play they are again left with 14 guests as mr uh as the prince of wales and his bodyguard they are also joining the dinner party so she once again she is very happy that she is the most successful hostess in the town so this was all about this chapter 42 if you have any doubt any query you can drop on google class take care shin stars thank you all of you